So, 10 tips. Let's have a quick look. First one is actually understanding that we're all wired differently. My biggest epiphany in my organisation was the day that I got uh, in my entire senior management team psychometrically profiled. I had a massive epiphany that day. Do you know why? Because I used to walk out of my management meetings frustrated that when I said, hey guys, we're going to do a brainstorm, uh, I've got this big problem, uh, I want everybody around me, and we're going to do a brainstorm right now. Half the room would go, yeah, let's do it. The other half the room would be dying. They would actually be going, oh no, another brainstorming session. It's not good. Because they're wired differently. And psychometric profiling allowed me to map my whole organisation and come up with my epiphany uh, out of it. And I called it 1 plus 0 plus 1. Please do this in your business if you want to gather up the best ideas from your entire community of people. Why? Because some people need a day's notice. Some people can do it on the day, and some people need a day's reflection. So if you've got a big problem to solve, big idea, and you need the big ideas, Please don't just rock up in the meetings like I used to and just expect everybody to be able to deliver things like you deliver them. Being a creative is a gift. It really is a gift. Thankfully, I was born with this ability to be creative in the moment. I can think and be creative as I, as I talk. But for some people, they can't. And you place an incredible pressure on them. So now what I do is, is I email everybody 24 hours at least in advance, hopefully normally a week actually and I tell them what we're going to try and solve. So the people that need to prepare, prepare. And they come in, and everything's organised, it's on a list, they've thought about it, and they come to the table, they sit down, they tidy it all up, and they're ready. The people that don't need to repair, kick the door in, come with the post-it notes and the, the Sharpie pens, and go, where's the problem at? And the reflectors sit quite quietly and absorb it all. And then what I do is I ask the reflectors for their feedback 24 hours after the meeting. What thoughts have you had after the meeting? And do you know what? Some of our best thoughts come after meetings, not during meetings. So 101 is the number to dial when you want your meetings about creativity and innovation to be more effective. Number two, look at trends. So you, talk, I, you, you heard me talking about trends. Part of my job as, as the captain of industry at Brother is to keep my eye on the big stuff. By absorbing the big stuff, only then can you start to see structural changes in the world happening. And three years ago, four years ago, uh, by looking at these things, I was able to spark an idea which resulted in a £3 million business for us 12 months later, simply because I was looking at the way the world was changing. So when you get it at the big picture, it gets easier to put it on the road at the, the right on the ground. So gather people in a room. We're looking at trends. I've spotted this. Guys, how could that be relevant to us? 101. Week later, we all went, we think that might look like that. Great. What should we do? We'll put thoughts and words into actions. We'll, we'll actually action something, and let's see if we can get a great outcome. And we did. So trend watching is should be part of everybody's job if you're trying to be more innovative, more creative, and try and find new journeys for your company. And there's a couple of um, sites there, Trend Watching and Springwise. Uh, they're the two that I kind of tend to keep an eye on. And there is some absolutely awesome stuff going on there. I also look at the sites like Kickstarter. I love to see which new business ideas are gathering traction, which ones are getting funded by the crowd because they think they're cool. All right, because if that's what the crowd think is cool, then that sounds groovy, and I should go over and have a quick look why they all think it's groovy. So, get your balance right. Now, this is one for you as a human being, right? So, this is now not about your business. This is about you and the way that you can be more creative as an individual. And I'm going to call this your create-react balance. This is basically the frequencies at which your brains work. There are basically four, which you can see on the screen here. Um, we spend most of our time, actually, in what's called beta state. Beta state is the doing part of, uh, of, of the frequency of our brain. You know, being the email monitor on the screen, device in our hand, running between meetings, on the phone in the car, captain of industry sort of stuff. It's brilliant. 
Um, okay, you're only using between 4 and 16% of your brain's capacity to think. Um, so is that a great place to be at for innovation and creativity? Probably not. Um, I would hear you cry. So what, what sort of things are we doing? Well, you can see there that effectively the four states is, is, you know, getting into an unconscious state is pretty hard, but I'm, I'm willing to thump anybody that wants to be there. No problem. Um, but actually triggering yourself into alpha state more often is something that is completely in your control. So what do we mean by that? Well, alpha state is doing things like um, walking, cycling, swimming, running, walking by a river, um, creating an environment where you are not connected to the matrix. Because now it's, it, there's a culture of uh, fear of not being connected. What am I going to miss if I don't check my phone for 15 minutes? Some massive thing is going to miss and I ain't going to be at that party. So if you're in that state and you're in that environment, you, you definitely are not going to be the best possible version of you when it comes to be creative. So lots of people nowadays, nowadays suffer from DDD. Device Distractment Disorder. <coughs> I can't be more than two steps away from my device. And if that's you, then you are probably in beta thinking most of the time. Which means you're not really giving yourself the best po possible opportunity to really think spatially about what's going on in your, in your overall horizon. And if you do that, you will be, um, if you're not doing that in terms of giving yourself that opportunity, you'll be doomed to fail, DTF, because most of your ideas are probably going to be limited by the amount of time that you can devote to them. And if you're time poor and busy, you know, you just kind of get revving ideas, you know, why don't we do this and we'll make more sales next month, this month, you know, where actually what we're trying to look for here is the big stuff. Yeah, what could be an over there moment rather than a here moment? So I would do this by riding my bike. I ride my bike a lot. I ride my bike for six to seven hours a week. And riding my bike puts me in this state. So when I ride my bike, I'm thinking like this. Uh, my brain drifts. If I've got a challenge at work, I solve it by, by thinking about it on my bike. If I want to be more creative, uh, I get great ideas when I'm on my bike or walking. Who has a great, who's had a great idea in the shower? Quick show of hands. Shower's a great place for actually thinking like this. It's no surprise that you get good ideas when you're showering. Is there a device in your hand when you're showering? Go on, who's going to confess? <laughs> Has somebody got a waterproof iPhone cover? You know what I mean. Um, so my tip is, and what I do to be my best as the head of a large organisation, is I prioritise time to make sure I'm disconnected from devices so that I can think about my problems, my challenges, where we're going next, what we should do, kind of the really big picture stuff. And I positively encourage you to do the same. 